So in a lot of e-commerce website, when the checkout process happens, we have generally these four steps. The customer first enters their info, then the shipping info, then they make the payment and then the product is delivered. And you may have seen a similar stepper component in such websites. Like for example, if a customer has entered their info and pressed next, you see the step was completed and we moved on to the next one. Now the active step is shipping info. If you press next again, payment, next, delivered. And when you finish it, yep, our complete checkout process is done. So let's go on and see how we can make such a stepper component using React.js. So I opened VS Code over here and let's initialize a new React app. So I'm going to say npm create wheat at latest. So it's going to ask us our project name. I've already opened this uh, folder called stepper over here. So I'm going to just press dot to create it inside of this folder only. Next is going to ask us to select a framework and we can select React and JavaScript. Yep, it has initialized a new React app. Let's do npm install to install all of the dependencies that are inside of this package.json file. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to go inside of the SRC and remove everything inside of app.css, everything inside of index.css and inside of app.jsx. I'm going to get rid of this state, all of these icons over here and inside of return, I'm just going to have a div which is going to say subscribe to roadside coder, which you should if you haven't yet. So let's go on and run this. So npm run dev and yep, we can see our app is successfully running over here. First of all, let me just change this ugly font family. So I'm just going to go over here and say body and font family to sans serif. Cool. Looks good now. Now I'm going to create a component over here, which is going to be our checkout stepper instead of which we will write all of our code, which doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to create it in just a moment. Above that, I'm going to have a heading called checkout. And let's take this and create a folder over here called components. And inside of this, I'm going to create a new file called stepper, or you can say checkout stepper.jsx. And I'm going to say RAFCE, press enter. And I'll call this component checkout stepper. Now, if you don't know how I did this uh, RAFC to create the boilerplate code, I have this extension called a 7 React Redux uh, snippets, which you can go on over here in the extensions tab and install and just type that uh, RAFC to create a component. Now, first of all, we're going to need some data, right? And generally during front end interviews, you won't be provided any sort of data. The interviewer will just tell you that do whatever you feel like is the best. So we're going to use a scalable approach over here of config driven UI. So over here, I'm going to create a simple configuration, which looks something like this. Let me close this up. Yeah, we have a variable called checkout steps. And instead of it, I have a name, let's say for customer info for the first step and a component which it will render below it. So if you go back and see, if I press next over here, you're going to see this is changing. This is the actual component that is related to this particular step over here. So that is what I'm going to take right over here. And I've just simply added a div over here, but you can add a full fledged component here. So cool. Let's take this and pass it down to our checkout stepper as a configuration. First of all, I'm going to import it. Okay. And I'm going to say config or let's say steps config equals checkout steps. Now over here, I'm going to receive it steps config is going to be an empty array by default. And now inside of this div, I'm going to quickly go on and render all of these steps config. So I'll say steps config dot map and I'll take the current step and the index. I'll say return over here. Instead of this return, I'm going to say div and this is our one single step. So instead of this, I'm going to have two things. One is the step number and the step name. So for step number, I'll just take a div. Let's say index plus one and for the step name i'll just say step dot name let's see if we get something over here yep awesome this is what we needed let's just give this a key as well i'm just gonna give this key of step dot name because it's unique for all of them let's just give this parent dev a class name of stepper and this one class name of step dash name but before moving forward are you struggling in react js and looking to learn it from absolute scratch let me tell you about the React web development course from Odin School. A three month roller coaster of learning and hands on fun. 
And the best part, it's not just for tech experts. Recent grads from any background are welcome, that too with a 360 degree placement assistance. Yes, you heard it right, they won't just teach you, but guide you towards the success. Check out Jitendra Kumar's inspiring journey from a Jharkhand village to becoming a successful Java developer at People Tech. This story emphasizes the transformative power of strategic educational choices and continuous learning. And here's the game changer. Odin School negotiates for the best salary packages on your behalf. They've got your back from the classroom to the boardroom. Now, investing in your future is a big decision, right? That's why they offer an EMI option that suits your budget. Plus, their fees comes with an early bird offer of up to 10,000 rupees, making your journey towards expertise even more affordable. So, mark your calendar because the new cohort is about to start. Their live weekend classes and recorded lectures ensure flexibility that fits your schedule. And obviously, the unlimited job opportunities that Odin School opens up for you. So, are you ready to level up your career in React web development? Visit the first link in the description down below for more details. And also before this, I need to uh, null check if steps.config doesn't exist. That is, we'll check the length. So, if the length of steps.config is zero, then I'm going to simply say return an empty JSX tag. Let's just give this div a class name of step and this over here class name of step number. Okay, let's go on and give these some basic styles. So first of all, for our stepper, that is this parent div over here, I'm gonna give this position of relative and display of flex and justify content to space between so that all of these items are evenly distributed from left to right. Align items to center so that they are in the middle vertically and some margin bottom of 20 pixels. So let me show you, yep, like this. For each and every step, I'm gonna give display flex, flex direction column and align items to center so that they are aligned from top to bottom over here. Then for each and every step number, that is this, I'm gonna give some width and height of 30 pixels and some border radius so that we see this round circle over here. Some background color and display flex and justify content center, align items cent uh, to be centered so that we want this one to be center aligned in this div. And some margin bottom of five pixels so that we have some gap between both of these and Z index to be two. And why have I given this Z index two? Because we are going to add a progress bar as well over here, right? So that this appears on top of that progress bar. And simply for our step name for this, I'm just gonna give this some font size of 14 pixels, very basic stylings. So let's go to, uh, let's go back to our stepper.js and add the logic for changing our steps or transitioning from one step to the other. So right below this div, and actually I'm gonna wrap this inside of a React fragment. So just like this and right below this div now, I'm going to create a button which is going to say next. Now, first of all, I need to create two states over here. First is going to be for our current step, which is going to track our current step. And we're going to create these states by using use state hook, which gives us two things, a variable to store the value and a function to change the value of that variable. And by default, this is going to be one because we are on the first step by default. And also I'm going to have another state which is going to track if this is completed or not. So by default, it's false. And I'm going to name this as is complete. Now, first of all, I'm going to take this current step and over here inside of our button, I'm going to add a logic. So if the current step is equals to steps.config.length, that is, is it at the very last? If it's at the last, I'm gonna show finish. Else, I'm gonna show next. And also we're not gonna show this button at all if this is completed. So if it's not complete, only then show this button. Okay, and let's give this button a class name of BTN and on click, I'm gonna perform some action to update our states. So let's just call it handle next, which doesn't exist yet. So I'm gonna create a empty function for now. So const handle next, just like this. Now, right over here, inside of our class name here, I'm gonna add some logic. So I'll just uh, use backticks over here so that I can add more classes with respect to the logic. So what I'll say is the current step more than index plus one, or is it complete? Or is the whole process complete? If either of this is true, I'm gonna add a complete class, else nothing. And other logic that I'm going to add over here 
if current step is equals to index plus one then add an active class else don't add anything so what's going on over here if this is more than if current step is more than index plus one then it is complete that is we're gonna show green color over here else if it's the active step that is that is the step that user is currently on then i'm gonna add an active class over here which will show like blue color over here so let me show you so inside of our css file and also i'm adding these css inside of index.css it's better if i just add it uh, inside of app.css because index.css is generally used for global styles so okay inside of the app.css i'm gonna add these things so if it's active then the background color is going to be blue and text color is going to be white if it's complete then background color is going to be green and the text color is going to be white so cool let's just try to simulate this yep you see this is active right now because by default the current step is equals to one over here let's say if it's two then you're gonna see this is complete so this is green now and this is blue over here but there's one more thing when this is completed i need to add a tick mark over here so if i go back and inside of step number i'm gonna say the same logic this logic over here if the current step is more than index plus one or it is completed then simply i'm gonna render a span inside of it which will have a tick mark else we will say index plus one and for tick mark we have this code over here like if you want you can use an icon as well but i'm going to use an uh, this code over here which will render tick mark so if we go back yep you see it will render tick mark now if i go back and change it to one now it's going to show one okay so the current step is selected over here that's fine and before this button i'm going to render the active component that is related to that particular step right so what we're gonna do i'm gonna create a const active component variable over here and simply inside of it i'm gonna say steps config and the current step so current step minus one dot component c will be capital and let's see it should be rendered yep it is rendered over here cool let's add the logic to click on next and it should go to the next step so inside of this handle next i'm gonna say set current step and so i'll take uh, the current value that is previous step and inside of it i'm gonna check if the previous step is equals to steps dot config dot length if it has reached the length that it, it has reached the very end then obviously it is complete right so i'm gonna say set is complete to true and i'm gonna return the previous step only else if that is not the case if it's not yet completed then i'm gonna say return previous step plus one then i'm gonna move it forward right so yeah this should work let's click on next okay this is working absolutely fine awesome now comes the most interesting part of the video that is adding a progress bar over here which will transition from one step to the other so for that um, right before this part i'm gonna create a div with the class name of progress bar and instead of this i'm gonna have another div with progress so this is going to be just the container for the div and this will be the actual progress bar that will be filled up let's give this progress bar some basic styles so i'm gonna make this position absolute so that we can align it on you know be behind those uh, steps top is going to be 25 percent left is going to be zero let me just give this some width of 100 percent left is going to be zero height four pixels so yep just like that background color is going to be this hash ccc like grayish color and for this progress inside of it i'm just gonna simply say height of 100 percent background color of green and i'm not giving width over here because we're gonna dynamically increase that width and transition is going to be 0.2 second ease where it transitions slowly okay now the logic for this is going to be very very simple so i'm just gonna say style equals width and inside of the back ticks, I'm going to create a function over here called calculate progress bar. And I'm going to call this function and I'm going to provide a percentage over here. And obviously this function doesn't exist yet. So let me show you. It's going to be very simple logic. Const calculate progress bar width. And with respect to our current step, so I'll say 
return instead of it i'm going to say current step minus 1 divide by steps config dot length and i'm going to calculate basically the percentage over here so dot length minus 1 multiplied by 100 this is a very basic uh, percentage formula and let's check this out so let's refresh this up if i okay there's something definitely wrong over here so i think this should be in a bracket else it will do the division first and then subtraction so okay if if i press next okay it's working but you see this progress bar is not properly aligned and there's a big problem in this component you have to start the progress bar from here and end it right over there so for that I'm going to calculate the actual width of this div over here dynamically. So I'm going to say const step or steps, uh, okay, step ref equals use ref and I've imported use ref over here. And instead of this, I'm going to take it as an array because we're going to keep all of these, each and every width of these components inside of there. So let's just move it at the top so it just doesn't give us error. And what I'll do, I'll take the step ref and for our each and every step i'll say ref equals and i'll take the current element and i'll say step ref dot current of index and assign this with this element so that we have all of the reference because it's a map right if you see so that's why we have created this an array and for each and every index i'm going to take a separate reference to a separate step okay we have that over here now i'm going to create another state as well use state for margins for storing our margin or you can call it width as well and instead of this i'm gonna just take two things margin left is going to be zero by default and margin right is also going to be zero by default just forget about this for a moment and let me show you what i'll do over here so inside of a use effect hook first of all let's see what do we have inside of uh, these refs is it imported oh we need to write it above this Inside of this, whenever the step ref dot current changes, this is console log step ref dot current, and let's take the zeroth element. And if we need the width of this, I'll say offset width. Let's see what do we get in the console. Okay, you see, we get eighty-eight over here. That is what we want. What if? Uh, what about the last one? So step config dot length minus one we get 59 yep you see we get dynamic width for all of these and all of them have separate width so simply i'll just take the set margins state and i'll say set for the margin left i'll have steps config zeroth index and for my margin right i'll have step config dot length minus one's width okay and i'll just take step ref over here and yeah i think this looks good let's uh, make a use of this so how will we use this margins over here i'll simply go inside of this uh, progress bar and first of all i don't need a width over here anymore let's just remove that and instead i'm gonna have a dynamic style tag over here inside of it i'm gonna say width is going to be and inside of the back text i'm gonna write calc so css provides us with calculate function calc and I'll say width is going to be 100%, but reduce the margins on both the sides. So I'll just say, and actually, you know, while we are setting this, we just want to reduce half of this width, right? So I'll just say divide by two, divide by two. So we just want to, where did it go? Yeah, we want to reduce margins dot margin left plus margins dot margin right. Okay, we're going to reduce that and now let's see. Oops, I forgot to give it a pixel. So I'll just say px over here and yeah, you see, we get our progress bar, but uh, it's left aligned. So we need to provide some margin on both the sides. So simply below this, I'm going to say margin. Let's just say margin left will be equals to margins dot margin left. And for margin right, it's going to be margin right. Okay, this should work and yeah, it's aligned. If you press next, awesome. It's working flawlessly. If we, no matter how much we resize it, it's going to be perfectly fine. This progress bar is going to be perfectly fine. 
and also don't forget to check out odin school by clicking the link in the description down below and also if you want to see more such videos like this click this card above my head to access the complete playlist